breathing in to come halfway up if you have that availability. And then <sighs> exhale the rest of the way. Doesn't have to be that noisy, I'm just making a point. <laughs> um, we like breathing. Um, yeah, we like breathing, yes. Um, and sometimes people get stuck there. Sometimes they're so tight that they're yeah. like, I can't inhale anymore. So you might have to exhale just a little sooner, kind of when you hit your sticky part. Love it. Something like that. Thank you for bringing that up actually because I think sometimes we get so stuck in the rules of when the exhale and inhale yeah, have yeah, to yeah. happen that we don't give ourselves permission. Right. Hello, beautiful people, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Matilda, and this I'm is Veronica, and today we are going to be looking at the roll-up. Um, I think we should just start, we'll start with the full roll-up. Yep. And then we'll just break, break it, it down. down. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Okay. Okay. So if you are lucky enough to have a strap at home or in your studio or have a studio, that's fantastic. If not, we're going to take a look at um, some ways that you can modify it. Modify yeah. it. Okay. So you're going to take your feet under the strap. Now make sure that the strap is at the ankle joint and not sitting at the metatarsals. Okay. Legs are all the way together. Ankles are flexed. I'm pulling towards you. Make sure we're not um, hyperextending the knee joint. You've got your pelvis nicely planted on the mat and you've got a weighted bar um, potentially. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna take a big inhale to start to rise up. And then as you exhale, you're basically cresting up and over and creating flexion through your flexors in the front. Inhale, you're gonna start to roll your pelvis back over your leg bones to roll your spine down and then exhale all the way through. Go one more. Yep. So as she inhales, she's going to imagine that she's pulling the breath into her back line to help kind of lift and parachute her up. The exhale is to create deeper flexion through her spine. The inhale suspends her ribs as she rotates her pelvis over her leg bones and then she's going to exhale and roll herself all the way down. Beautiful. Great. Okay. So that is the absolute hardest version. Um, we're going to start, shall we start just from the mildest and just slowly work our yeah. way out? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. And I'll take my so off. So we're going to take her feet out of the strap completely and she's going to start with her knees bent and her feet just down on the mat. Sure. Yeah. And chime up whenever you want to to see yeah. what you're feeling. Mm, I'll start people here. If we have the strap, they'll use it. Otherwise, feet stay flat where they are. Yeah. Uh, hands behind your thighs, and you're just going to basically roll your pelvis back until the arms straighten. And then exhale, melt your guts to help bend your spine to flex you forward. Just breathing in. And breathing out. And you know, what you want to watch for a lot of people is the first thing they want to do to bend their back is really round their upper back. So the shoulder girdle should stay nice and rested and heavy on the uh, rib cage. Yeah. And so really what moves you is that exhale. Yeah. To come bring you forward. Yeah. And that would be the mildest version. Um, I'm just gonna uh, jump in there quick and say, the reason we start here is I think one, a, a very, very challenging skill mm -hmm. is teaching the pelvis how to rotate over the leg bone. So that's over the femur. actually over the femur. Yeah. Uh, that's really the first skill that you want to start to teach, whether it's yourself or your client. Yep. So looking not only that the feet don't move, but that the knees don't lower and lift as you come up and yep. down. So you can hold on to the back of um, your client's knees, or you can just with your eyes watch your knees yourself. So what Veronica's looking to do is to just rotate her, yeah, her pelvic halves or her pelvis over her top of her femur bone to go back until her elbows straighten, and then she's going to bring herself all the way back in. Another way to take care of the shoulder girdle that she was talking about is when you're holding your hands at the back of your legs mm -hmm. from your pinky line, just gently pull mm -hmm. the legs into the back of your arm with the pinky line and try and maintain that placement as you go back and forth. Right. And if you can keep all of that stable, that's a bonus. Now you get to challenge yourself a little bit further. Right. So a little bit further for her is she gets to slide her hands down her thighs until she comes all the way down to her shoulders, even head or down not. Yep. or not. Yeah. And then she comes back up. Now on the way back up, this is very challenging, especially not holding on to something. So use your hands on your legs to kind of like help bring you back up and know what's the purpose here. What are we trying to strengthen? What are we doing here? Right. right? So we're trying to strengthen 
our flexors, yep. our psoas, our abdominals, yep. you know, creating some um, stability through the shoulder girdle. So, yeah, and I was just going to say, I think that's really important. A lot of people go, well, I don't want to use my arms. I'm cheating. But what ends up happening is that then they over recruit those yeah. superficial hip flexors yes. that we yeah. were talking about. And then they're bypassing or not even getting to the deeper flexor. So yeah. use the arms as a tool so that you can melt your six pack or your superficial abdominals so that you can get into the deeper flexors. They're all working. Correct. Right? And so that's exactly right. So use your hands as required because the other thing that people will do is squeeze their bum. Oh, okay. Grab their quads. Oh, yes. And let and yeah, let and pick that themselves be up. what picks them and they up. They go, ooh, this is really tender. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you're not really supposed to yeah. be feeling too much of that. Yeah. That's not all. an easy thing to no. get to get deep beyond the abdominals even yeah. to find that psoas. So then if you wanted to challenge that even a little bit more, we can just start by even taking the weighted bar. Okay. Uh, so keep. she's gonna take her feet or keep the legs where they are and then you can slowly start to move them okay. up. But by taking the weighted bar, the beauty of the weighted bar Feel how it kind of sits yeah. in you, right? So you're just gonna soften your elbows just a little bit, draw the arms, take the bar there, and then flex towards the bar. Beautiful. Now, you're going to inhale and start to rotate your pelvis over your leg bones to roll you down. Now that weighted bar, it's quite beautiful if you can have a weighted bar because what it does is the weight actually falls into your center and it actually will help create flexion. You can feel it. Yeah, it's nice, Especially right? when you sort of like pull that yeah, pinky yeah. line you pull talked about earlier. Pull the pinky line in and then she's going to exhale, contract her flexors and bring herself up. Then all you're going to do is start to, and then you can take the legs out. Now, you see how she doesn't have a strap? This is really challenging, right? Uh, but, so you can then, you can actually put your feet in the strap with the bent knee too. Yep, you, you could if you had one. So, yep. so now you're getting used to having the strap. Now, what the strap does is if you've watched an earlier video of us doing the 100, um, when I gave Veronica her legs or when my feet were on the foam roller, right. pulling the foam roller towards yep. us, the strap now, now you're responsible for inviting the legs back into your center. So the strap is there to pull your legs into your psoas and then you can roll your spine down off of that. Yeah, I think it's a fabulous tool to start teaching people how to connect their legs to their center. Absolutely. In a level one exercise. Yeah, and now especially I'm on the way in. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. And then the knees don't get to rise up and down. If the yeah. knees go up and down, correct. There's something that's stuck in the spine. So exactly. it's, a, it's a flexibility and a strength issue. That So just pay attention. Paying attention is just absolutely everything in order to create change in your body. Yeah, awesome. Totally. And then she's going to go to a straighter. So you can go a little bit straighter, a little bit straighter. Now I will say the really interesting thing about um, having your legs fully straight is sometimes that's actually easier yes. than keeping your knees slightly, slightly bent. bent. Yeah. Because it is a telltale sign. <laughs> yes, right? They want so, to use their And claws. we think that having a straight leg is like the amazing, is the yeah, ultimate. Yeah, yeah. And really it's like, even if you, so what I've done in the past, um, just stick something is yeah, just putting something, even like a half, uh, half, a roller. half a roller yeah. under it. And you have to, you have to stay connected to that roller so both on the up and down, which is just a tactile way of keeping the knees from right. going up and down. Yeah. So okay. I always say, don't push on it and then don't come off of it. It just has a nice, sweet little Beautiful. touch. Yes. And that's it the whole yeah. time. And then they yeah. truly got stabilized femurs yes. and mobilized pelvis. Yeah. And then again, because if they don't, a lot of times that talks to how tight they are in the iliacus and yeah. or psoas. Yeah. So this way it can get its full length yeah. and then it gets the opportunity to strengthen. Yeah. It's yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's amazing. so shall we show it with the bands? Yeah, so I think so. There's not a, everybody has. If you um, don't have a strap at home, yeah. Yeah, you can use a theraband. You can get these, you know, pretty much anywhere around your feet. Again, you know, watching that we're not changing the knees about, and you can do it right from the very modified yeah, version that, that she Matilda showed me uh, to the full out version. Yeah, inhaling and exhaling yeah. to come down, breathing in to come halfway up if you have that availability, and then. Exhale the rest of the way. Doesn't have to be that noisy. I'm just making a point. <laughs> we like breathing. Um, yeah, we like breathing, yes. Um, and sometimes people get stuck there. Sometimes they're so tight that they're yeah. like, I can't inhale anymore. So you might have to exhale just a little sooner, kind of when you hit your sticky part. Love it. Something like that. Thank you for bringing that up, actually, because 
I think sometimes we get so stuck in the rules of when the exhale and inhale yeah, have yeah, to yeah. happen that we don't give ourselves permission. Right. And we don't listen to our intuitive body. Like, I wish I could exhale here, but my teacher says that I can't I it. until yeah. it's there. Yeah. Right? And and that's 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 no, not, that's not the rules. No, right? there are no rules with that. I think exactly what Veronica said. When you feel like there's a sticky spot, yeah. use, use your, your exhalation exhale. Yeah. because that's yeah. when the muscles contract. Your flexors contract, obviously easier on yeah. um, exhalation. Because so what, what will great way. probably happen at that point, if you feel like you can't inhale anymore, you will definitely go like this. <gasps> yeah, like and breath holding. Yep. Yeah. And as soon as you yeah. hold your breath, you're creating tension not strength or flexibility yeah so i mean uh, we could talk about this one forever yeah, I know. but i think I we're going to end it there and yeah. of course if you have any questions or comments put them in the comment box and uh that's it for today i think so thanks for joining us yeah. bye guys